What's up, nerds? Welcome to the Nintendo Pal Block for January 5th, 2018. I'm one of your hosts, Corey Derrick, and alongside me, as always, that retro code, Edward Varnell. It is only the first week, and we have major <sighs> announcements of gays, dude. Like, <sighs> hey, everybody, welcome to Twitch, our live stream. Yeah, we are. This is the first episode we're doing live on Twitch. Uh, we've been. Talking about it the last couple weeks, uh, if you're a subscriber to the podcast or the YouTube page and watch us there. Uh, but we are live for the first time on twitch.tv slash NGR Radio. We're going to start uh, live streaming our episodes. So uh, we're we're in a little bit of a test phase right now. Uh, if yes. you joined us for kind of like the pre-show, pre-show, uh, we were just kind of rambling about stuff. But uh so be- before we get into everything, this is Nintendo Power Block. This is NGR Radio's Nintendo podcast. Uh, we're going to start doing it live on Twitch, and then you could also watch this show the next day at 10 a.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube page, Nerds Gone Rogue. Uh, like, subscribe, and share all that good stuff. Uh, follow us here on Twitch. Uh, also, we're going to start live streaming all of our shows, including uh, Nerds Gone Rogue proper, which we are also streaming uh tonight if you are watching us live so man ed we've got we've got a lot now we've got uh ngr pow block on twitter you can follow us there you can follow nintendo pow block on instagram as well uh i've been actively trying to get those out of the gate so come come follow us there uh join our facebook group facebook.com slash group slash nintendo pow block and uh we're going to be talking all kinds of Nintendo here, and uh, I, I hope you enjoy it. Ed, we are... A, I didn't know this, but we are are fastly approaching our 100th episode of Nintendo Power Block. Yes! So, uh, once we hit episode 100, I'm... Instead of the dates, like, because if you... If subscribers to our podcast, you know it goes up, like, the date will pop up instead of the episode number. Yeah. Once we hit episode 100, I'm going to start numbering them. Uh, that way, it's easier to, for people to follow and, and, and stuff like that. So, But, Ed, I'm really excited. we got a lot to talk about today. There, uh, there, there's, there is so much to talk about. I was thinking about doing a question block uh, episode today because I wasn't aware that this much was happening. Uh, but we're going to have to save that for next week or the week after or maybe just do you know, oh, some. You guys could check out our expansion pack yeah our new show on nurse go row it's, yeah and it's only youtube's uh exclusive so if you are subscribed to ngr radio on youtube you guys would be able to check out our first episode and more episodes coming your way yeah and that episode's getting good traffic so i'm pretty excited i'm pretty excited because i think i think it was good that we did the first episode of ex- expansion pack on games of 2018 yes. because i think you know, a lot of people got games for Christmas, and then, you know, the people who bought their Switch throughout the year bought Zelda, finishing up Mario, probably playing through Xenoblade, and they're probably wondering, like, well, what do I have to be excited for in 2018? And they go to look for stuff, and, like, you know, we dive deep into these websites and look up release dates and, and rumors and stuff, but, yes, you know, the, the average person just goes on and says 2018 Switch games, and maybe they'll find you know, that row at the top of the Google page that says, oh, Wolfenstein 2, Yoshi, Kirby, that kind of stuff. Uh, But that first episode, we dove into probably, what, maybe 85, 90 games, and we haven't even gotten the Nintendo Direct yet, so... Right. uh, Yeah, that... Please check out Expansion Pack, uh, especially that first episode, if, if, you know, it is... Hopefully... (laughs) By next week, we'll know more, and we'll we'll do an emergency expansion pack on that <laughs> on the direct. And well, here's what we're gonna do: we'll do an uh, update. We'll do an update to that expansion pack, but we'll also have a Nintendo a uh, Power Block reacts to the direct, which we will also do live here on Twitch.tv/slash NGR Radio, and then 
you know, we'll do a whole podcast episode about it. So, yes, uh, very excited. Ed Power Block's got a big year this year. NGR Radio's got a big year this year. Uh, and now we have a lot to talk about. But first, we usually like to talk about what we've been playing. Uh, is a new year, new fans getting switches, new fans finding the podcast. So, I guess refresher course. We'll go through. Uh, what we've been playing and then the news bits and then you know have some sort of either topic of the of the week or go through some uh, uh, question block questions and then you know kind of wrap it up we we tend to go on tangents a lot which is you know I think why a lot of people watch our shows anyway because we don't really we think outside the box some days when uh when an idea comes into our minds yeah exactly so Ed what have you been playing this week um so, uh, for my Xbox One, I've been uh, been playing Assassin's Creed Origins, you know, getting further into that game, doing some side quests. I'm hoping that I'm getting close to the end because um, I kind of want to get further along on some games that I I have, but, you know, that's in my backlog, but I, I haven't even uh, wrapped yet. So there's just some past games that I really want to finish. Um, I really want to start Lost Odyssey like really soon. I think that is my next plan uh, um, to do for that game. Like really... I love that game. Into, yeah, I'm, I'm so ready to play that because there's right now I'm probably like in about to dive into like four RPGs um, or you know or play between some because uh, like Lost Odyssey, Lost Fear coming to Switch when that when that gets ready to drop sometime soon this month. I'll be playing that. Um, getting ready to do uh, um, not Final Fantasy 12, um, but Final Fantasy 9 because I picked that up also on PS4. So I want to jump into that to that game and uh, uh soon i'm going to be re- revisiting final fantasy 7 also um kind of want to do a discussion about that later on down this year um how that kind of move rp uh rpgs to a cinematic feel um so uh that'll be for later but uh that's for my xbox one and a little bit of cuphead uh getting my tail kicked. <laughs> not getting my tail kicked but uh knowing that if I just do this thing at the right time, I'll be good to go. So um, working on that and enjoying that stuff. Um, PlayStation 4, been playing Titanfall 2, still just a great game. Um, running up walls, shooting everybody. Um, I'm actually playing it on easy, so it feels like I'm getting to the game quicker because I already beat it like on normal on Xbox One. So. Uh, just loving that game and Final Fantasy 12. I'm doing the wild hunts, so uh, trying to do all this, like a lot of bit of the side quests, and hopefully unlock everything on everybody's board and find a uh, find a magic that you can't buy in the shops and stuff. So I'm working on that for a Switch. Uh, started up Puyo Puyo Tetris. Um, that game is funny. Uh, but I'm loving it. Just, just uh, doing my Tetris part right now. They haven't switched me to Puyos yet, but um, uh, been killing the computer uh with my Tetris uh stre- my Tetris skills. So, uh, working on that. Uh, also working on Breath of the Wild. Just like literally started. Um, I got one more shrine to do before I get the paraglider and uh just visit the world. That game, like I said, everybody, that game is still just beautiful. Just just enjoying that um xenoblade chronicles x i mean not x xenoblade chronicles 2 um i've been diving in also and i swear this game needs just to win best comedy in a video game series of 2017 the meeting I have with Zeke, which is one of the this, uh, one of the characters that's on a box art uh, or a desktop, if you downloaded it from Nintendo's website, you do fight him. But he, he the shade that they do in this game towards him is funny. He he tries to do the special attack and he does it, <laughs> but uh, he something happens to him. And some of the characters just walk away in embarrassment to continue their journey. It, 
you have to see it to understand it. It's so anime cliche, but it's just so funny. And last but not least, the mummy de- demastered, uh, playing that and getting a little bit further into that game. Really, really loving it. Um, and soon I'm going to be jumping in on Charter, uh, the Lost Legacy, uh, the DLC. Uh, I got that. Uh, game uh, physically but I need to install it so I can play it but yeah that's nice. what I'm oh that's what I've been playing and plan to play yeah uh, I need to stop buying games but Nintendo won't let me <laughs> I know I can't I can't help it like I've been going through stuff and just like man there's too much to buy and too much to play uh but as for me I've I finished Assassin's Creed Origins, which was really, really good. I, man, that game ended really well. I am really glad that like it wrapped up in a in a great way. Uh, not gonna spoil anything here, but it it had a satisfying ending. Uh, and then I've been playing a lot of the Zelda DLC, and I've I've voiced my concern with the DLC early on because I felt like there was not enough there Mm -hmm. at first and then like you know i started playing through and doing like the the challenges of the side like they once you visit all four locations they give you some side quests and you're supposed to complete these side quests before you take on the main part of that quest and then like you know i've been doing that and i did the first champion uh quest line i did daruk's quest line and uh I don't know if I'm disappointed or not yet. I think I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna finish it before I really, really make a recommendation on if you should play this or not. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, but so far, my thing is, is like, unless you're like a humongous Zelda fan, like you should either a get this DLC and play it during your natural playthrough of Breath of the Wild, or b like if you've already beaten breath of the wild and you've beaten ganon and you've done a lot of the stuff you wanted to like the shrines are really really good like they're some of the best i've played but uh it doesn't i don't know if i would recommend it to somebody who like has already beaten the game uh i think that this game should I, i think this dlc is great or i think it's good i don't think it's great and i think that you know, if if you have already beaten Zelda, maybe you should, maybe you could pass on it, uh, unless you're like a huge Zelda fan. You know, I, mm-hmm. I I love playing it. I love that world, and I love finding the new shrines and the new uh, challenges that that offers you. Uh, but not everybody is going to, you know. So <laughs> uh, I'd say if you're a if you're a big Zelda fan, you should pick it up and play it. Uh, they're definitely the best shrines. Uh, but the the dev- the divine beast challenges they offer you they're not fun like they're okay you like uh the first one i did i'm gonna this is this is part of the main quest but i don't care you go in you go in and do like each challenge gives you three uh quests to do and you go do those three quests and then it unlocks the divine beast and it's kind of like a portal through time and you you uh you know those like kind of the glowy things in the middle of the divine beast that you touch and after you beat the boss and it takes you to the outside of the shrines or Mm -hmm. or the outside of the divine beast you touch it and then you go through time and kind of like battle the the uh ganon uh blight that you would fight normally during the divine beast fights but yeah they only give you a little bit of uh healing items they only give you a little bit of like a little a handful of arrows and they only allow you to wear what you wore into the fight so like it makes it a little bit more challenging but essentially it's just the divine beast boss fights again and then you get a little cutscene uh of the champion and it's like man i don't know was that really worth it but i mean at the same time it's like hmm, it was okay it it was okay i i like the challenges before the boss fight but i don't like that they kind of just reuse the boss fights 
So, uh, uh, I don't know. I would play it if you're a huge Zelda fan, but other than that, like, you could probably get enough out of the base game without downloading this. That's just that's just my take on it. But uh, I've been playing a lot of it, and I've been stocking up on some healing stuff. I've been stocking up on some uh, weapons and, and arrows and stuff. So uh, it's been a good time. But that's kind of all I've been playing. I've been sinking a lot of time into Zelda. I forgot how much I love that game to the point where it's like, I think I'm going to just play it again. Like, I'm going to start over and play it again at some mm-hmm. point. You know, uh, maybe under a different file, <laughs> like a different <laughs> profile, because I want yeah. my kind of like 100% run to be <laughs> saved, <laughs> you know, so uh, because they don't offer a second profile, which is or a second like save slot, which is weird because Zelda always offers you like three save slots. And this is yeah. the first one that really doesn't. But man, I love that game. I love everything about that game. Uh, except I was getting a little frustrated when I was in the castle when we were in that uh, party chat on Xbox. Yeah. And I, you were playing Assassin's Creed. I was playing Switch, and I was I was in the castle. And every time I would run away from something, Link would, like, naturally magnetize to the wall and, like, start climbing it. And I'm like, no, I want to <laughs> run away. Uh, but... I don't know. Other than that, and I had some Assassin's Creed button issues for a little bit. I was hitting, <laughs> I was hitting R one and R two as like, you know, attack buttons when it's you know, X or Y or whatever. So yeah. Uh, but yeah, Zelda's really good. <laughs> Not that I haven't so been saying good. that for you know nine months now, but <laughs> if you own a Switch or even a Wii U and you have not played this, you you're missing out. Like this is this is. This game is going to be the template of how games uh, will start doing open worlds in the next few years. Or, like, as Nintendo call it, open air. Yeah. Uh, so, like, I think even games like, you know, Assassin's Creed even took a little bit from Zelda and, and allows you to climb it almost everything, you know? Yeah. Uh, I think Horizon would benefit from a lot of, st- like, stealing a lot of stuff from Zelda like climbing and even the paraglider because <laughs> there's you know because like there's parts in horizon where you reach this high spot and you can't get down unless you like jump or climb down and it's really annoying to try to find your way down so yeah, yeah. the prehistoric tomb raider as i'd like to call it yeah uh man tomb raider is really good too really uh come on uh come on rise of tomb raider uh at any Tomb Raider at this point. Like, just give me some Tomb Raider on Switch. I'll be okay. I will be okay. Um, but yeah, that's kind of all I've been playing. Uh, what? No. I, oh, I played a lot of Puyo Puyo Tetris too. Like, mm-hmm. sitting on the couch, I'm like, I don't know what I want to play. I just throw on some Puyo Puyo Tetris. I ended up getting it digitally just to always have it on my system. And it's like, nice. I just, oh, is that your second time buying it? Shh. <laughs> okay. Uh, I also played a little bit of Steam World Dig too, and Mute uh, Mute Muds Deluxe or collection. Collection. I always want to say Mute Muds Deluxe, but it's Mute Muds Collection. Played that, you know. But man, Zelda just keeps drawing me back in. I need. I want another game this year that's going to draw me in the way that Zelda did, and I think it's going to be Fire Emblem. I'm really hoping it's going to be Fire Emblem, but yes. we'll see. We'll see. Direct's not here yet. I'm really excited to see what the direct has to offer. But. I I I really don't know what's going to be in the, in this direct unless it's all the indie games that got mentioned early. That's the only thing I could think of right now. Man, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> if I knew, I would tell you, but I don't know. So, uh, but since we don't know what's coming in the direct yet. We're going to talk about some other news that was happening this week. News and rumors, I should say. We like to call this segment the news bits. Boop, 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 boop. We don't have a theme song. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so starting off this week, uh, Nintendo has officially archived uh, 133 million posts and 72 million drawings of Miiverse as uh, you know the Miiverse from Wii U has shut down. Uh, but they have archived almost 
uh, 200 million uh, different posts, uh, which is sad because like, I think the Miiverse was a good idea on a, a system that wasn't popular. And I really, yes. I honestly think the Switch would have benefited from Miiverse. Yeah, a lot of people wish that Miiverse was yeah. on Switch. And and to me, that's a good sign that people wanted it on Switch. Mm -hmm. You know, I think people really like Miiverse um, from Wii U. You know, there, there are a lot of people who did some great drawings. Uh, a lot of people for the community were were like kind of really nice and it was really good to see people's comments and uh things like like that um definitely when you look at splatoon uh and the community that that game built yeah i mean they uh, went um, they went out of their way to build another meverse just for splatoon 2 you know so yeah oh man that's so, gonna be that's gonna be missed i think I think it would have benefited Nintendo to have it anyway, too, because, like, now everything is on your phone. They could have had a Miiverse app that you could just, like, type messages and stuff. And, get, like, right. look, while people are sitting at work, they could have checked into Miiverse, similar to what they do with Twitter and Facebook, and, like, got on there, posted some stuff, asked some questions. You know, maybe people would have responded. Like, if they're thinking about a game while they're at work and they're like, I can't get past this part, and how do I get this moon in Mario? How do I find this uh, armor set in Zelda? Like, you know, I think it would have really benefited the Switch to have it. And then when you got home, you could check the Miiverse stuff on your Switch, uh, you know, and they maybe do something similar to what Xbox does with their Snap feature. Mm. You know, have, like, the Miiverse pop up in the corner while you're running through the woods in Zelda or whatever. Uh, I think it would also be cool to get 3DS and 2DS Miiverse connected with switch mm -hmm. and maybe we might see something with uh Nintendo's I, well i think systems. it i think it would just be like an app that you would download on any of the systems and all, like mm -hmm. all the systems for nintendo would just be integrated into this you know like 3ds yeah. switch wii u like all of it would just be integrated and meverse would just be like a nintendo app for all of the systems and your phone and your laptop and, and your tablet and stuff so I don't know. I I thought the Miiverse was a good idea. It was just it debuted on a console that wasn't very popular and you know, people didn't really take advantage like a lot of people took advantage of it, but not enough people to keep it afloat, I guess. So Well, Miiverse was better than PlayStation's home. Oh just, so Yeah, let's let's not bring up home. That was uh that was Yes. Hmm. Yeah. So uh so there is uh a kind of like a press release today from from Nintendo saying that we can expect more uh I'll just read the quote here. Fans can ex can also expect continued support from major publishers such as EA, Activision, Ubisoft, Capcom, Sega, Take-Two, and Bethesda, as well as a growing catalog of quality content from indie developers. Uh and then Nintendo Life ended up they listed a bunch of possibilities of games that could come to switch uh particularly uh sega with persona and uh capcom with resident evil ubisoft with assassin's creed and watchdogs take two they had bioshock grand theft auto 5 and red dead redemption and they said you know their take was kind of like uh maybe we won't get red dead redemption 2 but red dead redemption remastered similar similar to what they did with Ellie Noir mm -hmm. and then uh Bethesda could bring the evil within fallout uh all that kind of stuff over too so uh and and Bethesda said last or what episode Monday when we recorded there was an article that said Bethesda says that their partnership with Nintendo is strong and that they have nothing to announce right now but they will soon uh so E3 Probably. Yeah, yeah, I'm guessing E3. They'll probably. My bet is either The Evil Within, or you know, ports of of Wolfenstein or Fallout. Yeah, like we were talking last episode, like Prey and uh, Dishonor, the Dishonor Collection. Um, I think mm -hmm. I still think those would be a, a good fit for it. The Evil Within, I could see. Yeah, that coming to uh, that coming to Switch, like mm -hmm. make it a nice uh, holiday. Uh, Halloween kind of game. Yeah. Uh, that report 
or that announcement kind of came through their press release of the Switch becoming the fastest selling console in US history, selling almost 5 million units in the United States alone and close to 13 million worldwide. So uh, yeah. we kind of went over those sales numbers earlier that analysts predicted that the Switch probably has sold about 15 million units. Uh, so, man, five five million units in one country. It's not bad That's for, good. The first, for the first nine months. So, yeah. uh, And I think now that, you know, hopefully they can restock them quicker, um, that's guaranteeing more sales um, for it. Like when people say, like, oh, these guys got switch in. Let me buy it before it sells out. So, yeah. you know, that's good. Yep. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for more of these games to come, and I'm excited for more people to buy switches and experience these great games. So, yes. Uh, let's see here. Uh, okay, Ed, brace yourself. We're gonna get into some rumor territory here. Mm-hmm. A new rumor suggests that Nintendo will release Bayonetta three sooner than we think. The game will be released this year, according to a person. Uh, uh, source from Platinum and even suggested that it might release this summer uh, probably in the August uh, range so uh, Bayonetta 1 and 2 we know are coming on February 16th as a bundle yeah. uh, Bayonetta 2 will be on the cart and you'll have to download Bayonetta 1 uh, but Bayonetta 3 if Bayonetta 3 is to release be released this summer then Nintendo could have announced that it should have announced that by now but look I don't care, man. When it's an, if it's coming this year, that just adds that just adds to this year's library. I I think it'll probably be out next year. I know because... my my thing was like, I bet this will be like maybe their February game next year, or if they really want to hit hard at the holiday, they they put this with uh, Metroid Prime Four and maybe a mainline Pokemon game. Uh, yeah, uh, I think the way when they did. Uh... 3D World, how 3D World came, came in September, uh, Bayonetta came in October, and then like uh, Pokemon came in December. No, Pokemon came in. It was, I think, like Pokemon was November. November yeah, that year. And I think Captain Toad was December. Captain Toad was December that year. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that four, that hot, that hot four game, uh, each game per month. Uh, would be another good idea for a Nintendo to hit yeah. to do, and so and and that'd be a good way for me personally to end 2019. Even if they do don't do 2019, 2020. Yeah. Uh. So I mean, look, I'm really excited for Bayonetta, but like, I think, I think it's a little much to release all three games in one year too. Yeah. To be honest, because like, I get it. You want to get people hyped for three by re-releasing one and two, but. You're gonna want a little. Want you're gonna, it. yeah. You're gonna want a little time between one and two, the release of one and two, because those two games are really long in their own right. And then to release a third yeah. game the same year, that's a lot. Especially when, you know, the rumors Capcom's bringing Devil May Cry five to E three this year. Like that's just that's there's a lot right now, and you need to. I think they just need to hold off till next year, personally. But yeah. You know, because I I think platinum because platinum been working on was working on near Automata and they really haven't been working on any other game. So I think, you know, they've been in the re, party the art uh, research and development stage, and you know doing artwork and getting things together, uh, probably like maybe a year and a half. You know the pre planning stages, and then when I think they probably started on level design getting fight mechanics probably getting the you know fixing some stories and tweaking stuff because nintendo i are is i bet you nintendo once again is coming to platinum checking up on the game giving their advice giving some ideas helping them fix stuff and then leaving to yeah. let platinum do what they need to do like and nintendo would delay and put pour more money in to make sure that that game is top quality that yeah. it's another hit yeah exactly so i i think nintendo is in a place where they can start you know not qu quote unquote delaying games yes but taking their time on specific games and then releasing you know they've got indies to fill these gaps now they've got 
finally have third party support to fill gaps. You know, we've got Mega Man 11, Mega Man Legacy Collection, uh, Street Fighter, Wolfenstein 2. Like, we've got all these things to fill gaps so Nintendo can take their time on their first party things, which, like, you know, the Wii U, like, say what you want, but, like, you know, I felt like some of the games they put out were rushed because they didn't have mm-hmm. things to fill the gaps, whereas now they do, you know, so. I mean, look, you look at January alone, they've got five games coming out in January and none of, like, five big games, I should say, in January, and none of them are Nintendo release or Nintendo published, so. Yes. uh, You know, next week you've got Super Meat Boy and and Fury, uh, Rocket League Special Edition is being released physically on the 16th, and then The Lost Sphere and Wonder Boy Dragon's Trap physical releases on January 23rd. And then moving Mm -hmm. into February, you've got three big releases there in the Bayonetta collection, Pac-Man Championship Edition 2, and Payday 2, like, in terms of big releases. So, like, you know, there's only one Nintendo published title in that time time frame, and that's fine. Because, look, we've got so many indies right now. We've got so much third-party support. I mean, another rumor is Wolfenstein 2 is coming in February. So, like, I mean, we've we've got... (laughs) Nintendo can take their time, you know, if, yes. if, if they want a fantastic yeah. library, like I, I still think like Kirby and Yoshi are going to come Q1, Q2. Uh, yeah. Cause I think their party will roll, uh, their party will roll out Kirby in March to start everything off. Yeah. I agree with and you. And then, and then start doing, maybe do Yoshi. I think Yoshi is May. I think Yoshi will be May. Uh, you know what? Just so I, they could get it out before E3. I think they're probably going to wait till after E3. I, it's something about Yoshi makes it a June, July kind of game. It, it makes it a nice summer game for some apparent reason. Yeah, um, I mean, like, I mean, they can put it out whenever they want, and people will go crazy over it just because, like, yeah. Nintendo doesn't need a calendar to put out a big release, and people will be excited for it. Uh, right. But you know, I think it's. I think you know. Q1, Q2 time frame is a great, great uh, time frame for Yoshi and Kirby. So, yeah, uh, I, I will say this. Um, I hope Pikmin comes out next year in March. I think that would be a cool game to release for the start of spring. It feels like a good spring game, you know, definitely dealing with uh, and the garden and, you know, just the Pikmin, something about them, just say, like, spring um about it so i hope to see pikmin 4 in uh 2019 yeah i'm like again like i'm really excited for this direct i'm really excited for e3 there's a lot that could be announced there's a lot that could be coming uh but you know in terms of like what we know now uh as of this recording like that it's fine if nintendo takes their time so uh other games rumored to be coming to Switch. Konami is bringing their WiiWare trilogy uh, rebirth coming. It, uh, blah. The rebirth. Yeah. Collection. Rebirth collection that they released digitally on Wii. Uh, and now they are they are rumored to be bringing it to Switch as well as a fourth game. Uh, the games previously released on Wii were Castlevania The Adventure Rebirth, Contra Rebirth, and Gradius Rebirth. Yes, uh, and now they're rumored to have a fourth entry. So yeah, we uh, everybody know. I ta- I think last episode I talked about this with Konami uh, coming out because I said we don't know what they're going to be bringing, and I did mention that I did like the Rebirth games, and I kind of want wish they come to Switch. So hopefully that rumor is true. Hopefully, hopefully it does happen. Um, also. Uh, I I still now I gotta hope for a treasure collection because I would love to see Sin of Punishment one or two on Switch. I would love to see Mischief Makers get a get a remake or a reimagine or something uh to come to Switch. Like I would love uh even Gunstar Heroes to come to Switch. Like I would love a treasure collection to come. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um. Uh... But I'm I'm excited for a lot of this stuff. So, uh, 
kind of got to let you guys know that there is a contest that is coming up. Uh, me and Corey will be talking about this to give you guys a little bit more details. Uh, one of you guys would be able to win a Forza Motorsport Hot Wheels connection. Um, just go to NGR Radio on Facebook. There will be more information coming soon. I will be throwing up a picture on how it looks so you guys will have a chance to win that. Um, it, it's a really nice collection and it would be cool for you know you guys to have it in the co- in your collection the car collectors or you know or anything like that so uh do look forward to that uh like i said we'll be giving out more information a little bit later on uh so as as for news um one of the things that I talked about in our past show was about a game called Zia Drifter. Um, it came out to Wii U and 3DS, and it was one of the games, like, if you bought it on each system, you got the other copy for free on the other system. Well, this game is coming to Switch, and we and Corey probably will talk about it. And I'm super excited because when we had a discussion about Mutant Muds, um, I did mention Zeo Drifter. I couldn't think of the name at that time, but Corey reminded me. And when I seen the announcement that that version is coming to Switch, I got super excited. I can now play this game on a bigger screen on the go. Um, I did play it on the 3DS and I didn't play it on my Wii U. Uh, I I just was so busy playing other games on my Wii U and I think that game would have got like skipped over. So uh, to have this game now on my Switch and to revisit it, I kind of hope they add, add more levels or they, they make it a little bit longer because even though it is hard, um, it is fun to play it is very it's a very great game and i really hope that when it comes out um that it, it gets announced uh soon for a date to be released and that you guys will pick it up for it um because that's what i'm looking for definitely uh when the release date comes and the game comes out i'll be picking it up so uh Zeo Drifter, you guys can check that out. Uh right now, if you still own your 2DS or 3DS, you guys can check it out. If you still own your Wii U, uh check on the eShop channel, you guys can still buy it. Uh, give it a try. It might also be on other platforms too. Um I would have to check PS4 and uh uh not PS4. I probably have to see if it's on Sony's uh PSN and if it's on Microsoft. Uh, system. If not, play it on a Nintendo console if you have one. So I really cannot wait for that. Uh, second of all, because <laughs> they were just pouring news out. Uh, Corey mentioned uh, Meat Boy coming out, Super Meat Boy. Um, I've never played it, so um, I am going to be picking it up. Our good friend Matthew Kill uh, from NGR Radio, he loves this game. And because I've never played it, I told him I wasn't ready, but I am going to be picking it up next week and give it a try. I, I love that old school kind of platforming, uh, but I, because I didn't have a 360 when it originally came out, I just didn't look feel right playing it on any other console, and I didn't look forward to it. So now that it's on Switch, it's another game that I am looking forward to playing. So hopefully... Uh, I do get my money's worth because I know the game is going to be hard. Yeah, but I'm a person who likes some hard games, not all the time. Uh, so I'm ready to, go, to play that game and go through it. So uh, there is a thing I would like to ask you guys. You guys could probably comment in this uh, comment session here on Twitch. We mentioned EA, um, you know being part of that list of games we look forward to more switch but ea is kind of kind of distanced themselves a little bit from nintendo and uh me and my couple of friends actually were talking about this about ea and nintendo and i had to ask them what does ea want from nintendo do they want nintendo to do all the marketing for them or do they want them to pay for pay for some kind of exclusive game or content? Because I think the state that EA 
is in right now a lot of people feel like they shouldn't be making no demands from any any console at all because of some of the things that happen into happening uh, with some of their games so I kind of want to ask you guys you know and you know, you guys can email the show at nintendopowerblock at gmail.com also. Um, what does EA want from Nintendo? And what do you guys, as listeners and watchers of the show, um, what do you guys want EA, want from EA on the Nintendo platform? You know, be, just besides sports. Do you want something fresh and creative? Would you like to see something like Boom Blocks again on the system? What do you want from EA? And what does EA need from Nintendo? So, yeah, go in the comment section, let us know, or email the show at nintendopopblock at gmail.com. Did you keep everybody entertained while I was away? Yes. Great. What do we talk about? Uh, we talked about Zeo Drifter coming to Switch. Uh, um, yeah, that was my uh, next story. <laughs> yeah. Uh, talked about uh, Meat Bo- Super Meat Boy um, that I never played it. Um, announced that we're going to be soon having a contest where they could win the Hot Wheels Forza Motorsport uh, package. Um, I'm going to be putting a picture up on the Facebook page so they could take a look at it. Uh, I've probably got to discuss details on how on some things and one of them will become a lucky winner uh, to win it so Yay. Um, I know and then uh, I asked the question uh, what does EA want from Nintendo and what do gamers or li- the listener who who own a Nintendo sy- uh, system what do they demand of EA or want from EA Our next little piece of news here, since Ed kind of ran through a couple things while I was away. uh, Some retailers have been listing the standalone neon pink and green Joy-Cons for Nintendo Switch, which are the kind of special Splatoon. They came out when Splatoon came out. Uh, I think Walmart Mm -hmm. had a special edition uh, Splatoon Switch where you got the pink and green. And now these ones look to be the opposite color of those. Yeah. Uh, so, so some some retailers are starting to list those, which are cool. Uh, I've got my blue ones. I think I'm all set. I don't really think I need a pink set unless you know my wife ended up getting a switch of her own. I need to go buy my yellow ones. Uh, I want the yellow ones too, though. Those ones are cool. The arms ones. Yes. Oh, those are cool. Yes. Looking. Those are really cool looking. Um. So that's cool that we're getting more Joy-Cons. I want more special edition Pro Controllers, to be honest with you. Yes. Uh, but, oh, speaking of of Pro Controllers, remember that uh, nifty little system called the Ouya that tried yeah. to be that weird Android system? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can now link your Ouya gamepad to the Nintendo Switch as a pro controller. <laughs> if that if you are one of the three people who spent money on that box. <laughs> uh, so that's cool, I guess. It's a cheaper alternative, although the pro controller is probably the best controller out on the market right now. I love that thing yes. so much. Yes. Uh, so uh, another rumor is that SNK is is readying a new Switch release for 2018. Uh, if it's SNK, I'm guessing it's a fighting game. Uh, maybe it's Capcom versus SNK. Uh, oh, that would be fun. I, th- I would love to see King of Fighters on the Switch. Yeah. I mean, there's already a few uh, from the hamster kind of releases right there's a couple king of fighters for that uh but i think a new one you know i think the fighting game i think fighting games have been you know progressively getting better and i think it'd be interesting to introduce a new king of fighters now Uh, yeah so that'd be cool oh um also congrats to everybody uh to the guys and developers who made brawl out they sold fifty thousand copies of their game and it was very profitable for them so uh shout outs to them Ed's jumping ahead here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Brawlout has passed fifty thousand sales on. <laughs> uh, 
Well, for those of you who don't know what Brawl Out is, it's it's a kind of like a Smash Brothers clone. Uh, they have a bunch of uh, strange characters, uh, but Hyper Light Drifter and Guacamelee are both uh, guest characters in that game. So that's cool. That's cool. I I wish they would have went the full on Smash clone and just like they were like hey we want your indie character in here so though like you know the character from steam world dig would be in it and then shovel knight i wish they would have gone full on indie mode and just uh-huh. gave us like an indie smash brothers uh but i think it's cool that they have guest characters and it i mean it plays like smash brothers so yeah yeah yes uh also there was a Star Wars game pitched to EA. Uh, let's see here. Let me get this. I want to get the story straight because I want the developer to be uh, correctly named. Uh, North American Studio Double Damage, who created Rebel Galaxy, uh, pitched a Rogue Squadron reboot to EA, uh, and EA said no. But they released some images and video of this uh, Rogue Squadron game, and it looks awesome. It looks like, it looks like Rogue Squadron. It's, oh my gosh, it looks incredible, man. They have, like in the video, they have uh, X-Wing and the Millennium Falcon cockpit views and shooting some X-Wing outside of a a Star Destroyer. Uh Uh-huh. Man, this game looked awesome, and it just, of course ea kind of shut it down but uh yeah yeah uh, and they EA. wanted they said uh rebel or uh double damage said they wanted to capture the feel of rogue squadron 2 rogue leader on modern hardware while still maintaining that classic star wars feel that we felt on the n64 original uh they had planned a death star trench run a hoth level and uh battle above the second death star from return of the jedi uh so i mean it's sad Uh, and they said they were looking into maybe getting some uh uh force awakens and last jedi content in there as well Ooh. Uh, so uh the video also shows the millennium falcon in a dogfight with slave one which was really cool so uh, nice. They wanted to have competitive multiplayer as well as uh, mo- uh, co-op in the campaign. So it seemed like a pretty ambitious project. Uh, but again, EA said no. So hmm. sad. Uh, their loss. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. I I always get sad when like I see these cool like because. Uh, Rebel Galaxy, from all accounts, was a pretty cool indie game. And when you see an indie game or an indie developer pitch this game and, like, the graphics look good and it looks and feels like Star Wars and, you know, they they pitch it and companies just won't take a chance on an indie developer and sign them to a contract to make a game. Like, we talk about that all the time with Nintendo uh, during the Wii U era, you know? Like, why don't they just sign WayForward to make a Metroid game? Why don't they have Shovel Knight make a... Uh, 2D side-scrolling Donkey Kong game. Why don't they have you know some of these indie developers that are like uh, the fast racing Neo guys make an F Zero game? Like, why don't they have comp- like some of these indies do these games for like a thirty or forty dollar download, and and people would buy them, you know? And it just yeah. it just sucks that we continue to see stories Hi, like so this. So I just got off the phone with our Allstate agent, and I know that we have access. <sighs> sad yeah it's it's pretty sad i'm i'm sad the so but anyways the last the last story we have here uh a live streamer broke a tetris record on accident (laughs) did you receive this story yeah i looked at it oh man it's funny let me let me pull up this full story here my my internet is being slow because it's trying to do a bunch of things at the same time so it's struggling to load some stuff like, uh, how do you accidentally break a record <laughs> it's dude, look I don't know okay so here it is on this is a, from Nintendo Life uh, 
random. Switch streamer accidentally sets new Tetris world record. Uh, Jonas Neubauer was streaming, uh, actually attempting to break a break the record for clearing 100 lines in Tetris. Uh, during the attempt, he casually noted how he had very quickly reached 300,000 points, another well-known Tetris World record, and continued to blast away to the 100 lines. Uh, after messing up the attempt, he tur turned to the comments to find out that he had actually broken the record for reaching 300,000 points in an amazing two mi under two minutes, one minute and 57 seconds, uh, which you can watch the events uh, below there's a video of him actually breaking the record in under two minutes which is <laughs> pretty astounding so uh, yeah that's that's weird that he was like if he's trying to set a record don't you think he would be aware of the other records uh, <laughs> uh, but it's funny and that's that's kind of cool at the same time so it is it looks like the NES version of Tetris also so yeah uh, so. well congrats to him yeah yeah congrats to him uh, let's see. Anything else? Anything that I missed, Ed? Uh, anything that you miss? Uh, I know for people who are watching this, check the eShop. Kirby's Battle Royale demo is on um, eShop mm -hmm. for the 3DS. Yep. So if you guys can check that one out. Uh, let's see here. There was one other thing. Uh, nope, that's it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just I just get so excited to talk about stuff that I just say, hey, something. Nope, just kidding. Oh, um, Mario and Rapids Kingdom Battle Story DLC might come out in June. I don't think we covered that one. Uh, yeah, I saw that, but if I mean it was reported on Game Informer that it might come in June, but I I until it was like really confirmed, I wasn't really going to mention it. But yeah, right. well, I mean we we talk about rumors, so why yeah. not? Yeah, uh, I think that's I think that's uh, I think that's it. So, um, oh, there's more releases today, I guess. Uh, the Neo Geo King of the Monsters is on the Switch eShop. Grand uh -huh. Prix Rock and Racing. Uh, Pick a Picks Deluxe. I don't know what that is. Uh, Stick Bold, a Dodgeball Adventure, which looks like a dodgeball game. I guess, uh, and then the, then like Ed said before, uh, Kirby Battle Royale demo version is up on the 3DS eShop if you are still uh, playing that thing. So, uh, yeah, uh, the Japanese Tingle game got fan translated, <laughs> so now that's in English. I'm like, oh wow. Yeah, and somebody else made a new Super Mario Brothers mod for the DS version, and. Uh, <laughs> they added a bunch of new levels and a bunch of like weird things like there's a donkey kong minecart level in it and nice some other things so uh some weird things man some weird um, things mad cast is back yeah i saw that too i uh, i didn't want to sit here and cover uh, every single thing that was out but uh feudal alloy so Feudal Alloy is a switchbound metrovania with fishbowl powered medieval robots. So you guys can check that story on Destructoid. Um So I think that I think that's gonna be about it for the news. Uh somebody did mod this isn't really Nintendo related, but I think it's funny. Uh to voice his opinion on uh Battlefront 2 to EA he modded a pink version of Darth Vader into the game. Uh, so that's pretty funny. Uh, and a lot of people are latching on to that story because, you know, they came out and said they didn't think anybody wanted a pink Darth Vader and he ended up making one and people are <laughs> going crazy. So that's awesome. Uh, the world of PC. Uh, PC. PC. Yeah. So anyways, Ed, I want to ask you a question. Uh, yes. So this is going to be a big year for Nintendo. And the more I think about it, the more I think, you know, Nintendo in a kind of tang tangentially developed way, like I think they're going to still develop the 3DS uh, for the 3DS in terms of like second party and third party support. Uh, what are kind of some of the major things you're looking forward to uh, in terms of, of Nintendo in general this year? Like, 
I'm not. I, you could talk about games, but there's other things like you know. Would you like to see an upgraded eShop? Would you like to see a better OS? Would you like to see? Uh, what do you want to see from the online infrastructure that they're putting out? Um, I would like to see uh, where you could tap your credit card on the Switch. I think they do it in Japan. They used to do it for the Wii. It's like you touch your credit card and it automatically pays for your game like you don't have so you don't have to put in all that information or worry about hacking you just touch it and be like oh we realized it or put that or put it in like eShop cards um where you after you get paid it's active and you can just touch your switch with the car and that's you know pretty, pay for your game that's a pretty smart idea i didn't i didn't know that was a thing in japan that's pretty cool yeah um, because they they got some kind of system like that in Japan, so I would like to see that. That'd be um, cool. That'd be cool if like you go to the store and you buy an eShop card, and when it's activated, you just tap it to your Switch. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Um. Uh, another one I would love to see. Um, I would love to see some more nin- nin- Nintendo shorts. Like the Pikmin one was really good. I would love to see uh, kind of another continuation of the Star Fox anime that they show yeah. like that one was really good and I know whatever you feel about the game that's fine but you gotta give it up for that little short that one was really good I would love to see something I would love to see more stuff like that um Nintendo more Nintendo snacks like cereal um cookies um you know them still breading out the Mario series to like food products I would love to see I would love to have like flower power jello or pudding pops or something like that um uh, just see nintendo do some really cool uh things you know like with food and maybe some exclusive toys so no some new exclusive toys like um how they got the splatoon gun out like i could see some more toys coming from the splatoon line to toy stores um, I think that would be really cool uh, for Nintendo to do, and also uh, for Iwata, for Iwata's, you know, uh, like recognizing Iwata on the day of his death or even his birth. Um, I kind of would love to have maybe a Nintendo sale of all the games that Iwata helped on, or that has you know inspired or paid tribute to. I would love to see have that one day sale for it, um, I, and maybe Nintendo, you know, release fan art of people posting this stuff. I would love to see that this year. <sighs> yeah, I would like to like when you're talking about the shorts. I was thinking about what if, what if Ubisoft's animation team did a Mario Rabbids, like, just like three three to five minute videos of oh. of, of Mario Cross Rabbids or something. Yes, or, I would love that. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know what who else they would do that with. Maybe like a Donkey Kong short or something. But like the, when you said more shorts, that was the first thing that my mind jumped to was the Mario Rabbit stuff. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's like a, the best idea, but uh, last but not least, I think we talked about this, but I kind of would like to see Art Academy come to Switch. Yeah, I mean, I think they could package that game with like a pressure sensitive stylus, kind of like yeah, like Apple sells for iPads, and you know, like I think that would be cool, or like a DS stylus or whatever. Um, yeah, a lot of people would say, "Oh, it's just Mario Paint." Because like, not- well, because like that would also like that would be smart for them because people are gonna want to use that for when Mario Maker makes its uh, debut mm-hmm. on Switch. So, uh, yeah, that'd be cool. I don't really know. Honestly, I don't really know what I want to say. I just want this direct because, like, <laughs> like once this direct comes, like, we'll have a lot better idea of what the roadmap is, and then we can kind of like <laughs> talk about what's coming and like what we'd like to see, uh, be like after E three and whatever, because we'll know what's coming. Uh, yes. But I think in the short term, I would really like. I was on the eShop yesterday looking for stuff and just kind of like messing around and and it's there's a lot of games on there now and it's like getting hard to find specific things unless you actually search for it by name i would like them to revisit the eShop and just kind of like make it a little bit cleaner 
or a little bit more streamlined instead of just, you know, have it being really basic looking. Uh, even though I think it's, I think it's clean. I just think it's, it's getting a little crowded on there and it's getting kind of hard to find the games that you really want to, uh, especially if they're not popular or on sale. So, uh, that might be one thing. Uh, another thing is I think, uh, I would like them to add messaging to your friends list. Uh, yes. Cause like sometimes like I'll see people on and they're playing games and I've kind of want to message them like I would on Xbox, but, uh, can't yet. So, uh, I also, <laughs> I also want to be able to keep my games in alphabetical order or be able to mm-hmm. arrange them the way that I want to in the, uh, view all apps mode, uh, because them being all scattered like that is driving me nuts. It's driving me nuts, Ed. I just want my games alphabetized. Just let me alphabetize my games. So. Yes. 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 Also, I want Nintendo to provide me with more shelf space so I can buy more of their games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah. I like I told you, like the other day I was laying in bed kind of like thinking about the games that are coming out this year for the other systems and I'm like trying to plan out and kind of budget my money and see where it's going and and what i want this year in terms of of the other systems and it's like i really just want my stuff on switch because like i i just i don't know i don't know man there's just something about the legacy of nintendo that is making me like really want to just have a nice library of nintendo games like it's the legacy it's the nostalgia all that stuff but at the same time it's like I really just want like a nice Nintendo collection, you know? And it's yes. like, I, I am excited for games on the other systems. Like I'm excited for, to play sea of thieves with you and Jesse and, uh, play God of war and, and stuff like that. But I don't know, man, I'm at this point now where I'm just like, man, these games are like, I just want a nice Nintendo library. I want to be able to play these games on my switch and like, you know, I told you last night. I need, I need like two more Wii U Pro controllers. <laughs> yes. Uh, dude, those things are like really hard to find now, <laughs> and it's only been nine months since the system was not for sale. Look, I was gonna, I was gonna recommend. I'm like, see if they got a Kmart or something <laughs> somewhere. I mean, there's one like a half hour away from me, but like, I don't know. And then you go on Amazon; they're always like the generic ones. Uh huh. It's like I don't, I don't want a generic one. Those are, I don't know. I'd be afraid they would like break after like five seconds. <laughs> well, like I said, look, well, look at that Kmart and see. Like I would say, try the places that is unexpected and maybe a garage sale if they do them in your area. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'll see. I just, I mean, Amazon warehouse deals have them on here, but. You know, if I'm going to pay that much for one, I'd rather just buy it new. <laughs> yeah. But and plus, I know, uh, you know, I'll let you know, because I'll be up in Wisconsin um, this weekend, uh, and there's like a little uh, uh, shopping center um, that carries, I think that still got some Wii U stuff there. So if it's if it's still there, I'll, I'll see if I could pick them up and ship them all to you and we'll go from there <sighs> if they yeah I man I need to I need to get some of these switch games I need to pick some of these up too man I'm just looking I'm sorry I'm just looking on Amazon I always look on Amazon about that <laughs> stuff while we're talking because like it just gets me excited I just want to buy them all but I can't so I just look I'm just I just look I'm like oh I want that oh I want that oh I want that so but um is there anything else you want to want to talk about before we get out of here anything nope. that we missed or any side stuff or whatever no nope. everybody just have a great weekend tune in next week for more nintendo pop block yeah uh so like we said this is nintendo pop block this is ngr radio's nintendo show i just got like really tired after that <laughs> 
Man, like, and I slept in today. I don't know if you saw my Instagram post, but like, I slept in today. I was uh -huh. like, I took a picture of the clock and it said, "Is it? Is, I can still say good morning, right?" And it's and the clock said eleven fifty nine. So, uh, I slept in, dude. And I never do that. I never sleep past like nine thirty, ten. Like, oh, if I'm off, and it's like I got a lot to do. I had to set up the Twitch page. I had to redo the website. Like. Man, we I did a lot last night and this morning. I was up to like three, like almost three fifteen last yeah. night working on the website and stuff. I was talking yeah, to I, 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 was, I was talking to Jesse about music. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't respond. I was knocked out. Going, I woke up. <laughs> it's just like, oh, they were talking. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, but anyways, so there's a big list of places to find us now. You can find Nintendo Power Block live streaming our episodes now on twitch.tv slash NGR radio. You can follow us on Twitter at NGR power block. You can follow us on Instagram at Nintendo power block. You can find us. You can watch us on nerds gone rogues, YouTube page or on NGR radio.com slash Nintendo power block. All of our shows are there. Our expansion pack episodes are there. Our let's plays are there. Uh, and I redesigned the let's pot and play thing. So I'm really excited for that. Yes. Um, that's part of play. Yeah, we need to. Man, I keep saying we need to do that, but we need to do that soon. Uh, <laughs> like yeah, <laughs> like yesterday. Uh, where else? Uh, you can you can follow NGR Radio podcast on Twitter and, and Instagram as well. Uh, you know that's kind of our umbrella. If you're watching us on Twitch and this is your first time viewing us or watching us, we have a whole whole family of shows. We have Arsenal X, which is our Xbox podcast hosted by Edward and jesse and me there's ngr radio proper there's nerds gone platinum which is our playstation show we've got world one one we've got partners in the brew review and matt and the b flats which is uh, a beer show and a music show respectively uh you know if you go to ngr radio slash friends uh dot com slash friends you can find a bunch of our friends shows there as well um trying to promote our friends more and more um uh, you know because they all do great work yes uh, Let's see, where else? Ed, where can we find you? You guys can find me on Twitter at that Bretrico, and you guys can check out my podcast, Optional Opinion, on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, and other podcast apps. And also check out The Moment on scrimmagefrogs.com, where I'll talk about old video games and how they apply to my life. So, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and World War One Podcast and Arsenal X, of course. Of course. Uh, you can find me at CoreyNHD on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, you can find me on NGR Radio. We are, if you're watching this live on Twitch, we are recording tonight. We are going to live stream them on Twitch and YouTube. Uh, yes. Twitch.tv slash NGR Radio. We record on Thursday nights. You'll be able to find me, Matt, Moose, and an occasional guest uh, on that show. Uh, where, you know, it's not really a new show. It's not really a, any show. It's just kind of like we hang out and talk about games and, you know. Other things. Other things. So uh, check out uh ngr b-sides which is our youtube show for ngr radio um uh, let's see man there's so much to promote i don't even know if people are still listening but you can email the show at nintendo power block at gmail.com we will be doing a question block show very soon depending on when that direct is announced it will probably be next week or the week after where we just take a whole episode and answer your questions uh i'm Still want to integrate that into every show, but we'll see. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is this has been Nintendo Power Block, January fifth, twenty eighteen, and until next week, we love you. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>